Hey there, YouTube land, and a really quick unboxing here of Screen Factory unboxing, but not the type you think. Uh, Screen Factory gets, uh, a lot of, gets a lot of hate recently for like uh, mistakes that were made with the Nightbreed set, and the, the mistake that was made with the uh, with the audio sync on the uh, on the Halloween set. But I think Screen Factory is doing a pretty damn good job. And uh, <clears throat> when I did my orders from Screen Factory, one of the things I ordered was a uh, was Motel Hell, and I ordered it early enough to. Uh, to get the poster, but uh, I got to come. The poster wasn't there. Uh, it took a ten-minute call to have them, uh, like basically, send it out to me. So let's open it up and make sure I got the right thing. So okay, here we go. With oh sweet, okay. <clears throat> this is a, I don't know, I guess they sent this as kind of a bonus thing, it's kind of like a Scream Factory, kind of a, I guess so, I don't know what you call these things, uh, what do you call these things, that's a, maybe thing for a computer or glasses thing or something, maybe it's just a Scream Factory logo banner, kind of a banner, I guess, a small banner, so they sent the Scream Factory banner with it, which was really, really cool, I'd already gotten the magnets, so I didn't expect to get those, they were really good at getting me those, so this here, Finally, is my very own copy of, and not a wet one by the way, the beautiful poster art for Motel Hell. Takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. I love this poster. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this was a must get for me. Uh, just such great, great art in this one here. I love the. Uh, come up, come. It's a fun film. Uh, this was a neat little bonus the Screen Factory gave. It's just really cool that they did that. Because, you know, I was just expecting the poster and nothing else. But uh, really neat to have the Screen Factory kind of logo thing. I love their logo. <clears throat> so uh, this goes with my Screen Factory collectibles. Now I just need a t shirt. Uh, yeah, down the road I gotta get a Screen Factory t shirt. Because uh, I'm quite the fan. Of the uh, of the company and the stuff that they do, so uh, a lot of people have been a uh, man on the uh, on the recent releases. I heard Animal is actually really really good. It's uh, the guy that did the creature in it. It's the guy that did the creature from Feast, and it's really noticeable. Oh, but I like the Feast trilogy, so uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, Animal is one I wasn't sure about getting, but uh, I think I'm gonna grab it now. And uh, again, very impressed with Screen Factory. Impressed with how fast they got the stuff here to me. Uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm going to go out and have some tea now and watch the uh, rest of a kind of a mini series type show I'm watching at Netflix. Mm -hmm. The Man Who Would Be Bond with Dominic Cooper. Really good. I gotta say, I'm really liking it so far. So, again, thank you, Scream Factory. You're fantastic. Uh, as always, I keep buying your stuff. I got two more to come. I just got sent a couple days ago, though, <clears throat> but it'll complete my. Uh, at this point, John Carpenter collection, and a little bit have given me a little bit of a haunted housey type one. Plus, I ordered one from H and V, but that's going to take a while to come in. And uh, that one, uh, his movie done in Canada, that I really wanted to get, but I couldn't. So I ordered it from a local H and V because the sales was over. So I said, "Shag it, I want this movie." Uh, at this point, I'm going to look through the Scream Factory stuff and down the road. I think I'm going to get a complete collection. The Nest is not my favorite, favorite film, but I do like Lisa Langellis. Uh So, it's a possibility that I'm going to end up trying to do, get them out in the road. Because uh, <clears throat> if there's any series that I want complete, it's Scream Factory, which gives me basically the movies that I grew up watching uh you know good or bad i grew up with movies like nightbreed and motel hell i uh <clears throat> grew up watching halloween and this and cycle two and three in the theater uh I remember body bags when it came out i uh actually you know dolls the fog <clears throat> and all these are my childhood and being the films that i really really enjoy <clears throat> and i watched them several times i mean like for me, I don't get a Screen Factory just because it's a Screen Factory. I get a Screen Factory label because I grew up with them. 
<clears throat> those were the movies I went to the video store and rented over and over again. I mean, I didn't just say, oh, gee, I want to get dolls because it's got a nice, cool cover. I got dolls because dolls is a movie that was a, I was a huge fan of, something that I'd grown up with and had and totally fell in love with. I got a... My kids actually love that movie. <clears throat> they have the old MGM release, and and my son's getting the uh, the new Blu-ray release of uh, Dolls. The Burning and Day of the Dead, The Fog are all films that uh, mean a lot to me. So when I get a lot of the Screen Factory stuff, even some stuff you might think is cheesy, like uh, when I got X-ray and Schizoid. Not a lot of people, I guess, were really excited about X-Ray and Schizoid. They knew Schizoid from, like, Klaus Kinski, but not a lot of people knew X-Ray. But I grew up, I lived in a place, uh, oh, I remember one year, my mom was living in Cornerbrook, and I didn't live with my parents, I lived with my grandparents, but I went up to my mother's, and I stayed there for the summer. And about, like, a block down from us was a, uh, was a video store. And uh, I was a young teenage boy, and I came across this movie. Uh, was it called X-Ray? I think it was called something else. Uh, anyway, uh, VHS, cool little cover and all that stuff. Uh, picked it up, but with a bunch of others. And, you know, nudity scene, very cheesy. Uh, I was so in love with the slasher genre. It was like... Uh, I can't begin to explain. A lot of people really don't like slasher films. They consider them a lesser genre of films. I grew up like watching and like studying films, but my love of this came full force with the slasher genre. And here's the thing, a lot of the slasher films were like kind of murder mystery films too, and I was already this big uh, murder mystery buff, I mean Murder Inc, if you ever, it's, in a, it's a store in England, or was a store in England, that sold like mystery novels things. So they put this this book, this kind of compendium, with all these different uh, like authors and and telling about their characters and their stories and the way that they work and stuff. Like the Christie and all these people, Sherlock Holmes. I you know the first book I got was this two volume big thick uh, hardcover Sherlock Holmes thing. So uh, <clears throat> Murder Inc was like my favorite thing to read. And as far as like the murder mystery and stuff like that go, aside from watching the Agatha Christie ones that came on that were actually fairly tame at the time, uh, I was a kid, and the slasher genre like really spoke to me in that I could actually. There's so many twists and turns. Um, you know, a lot of these murder mysteries were like really, really simple to find out, obvious characters, but it didn't matter. It was just the fun of it. It was the fun of like at the, at the end, like a prominence and masking. I even though I was pretty much knew who it was almost all through that film. Uh, I just really enjoyed it, and I loved the different way that the killers were done. I started to notice the score thanks to movies like uh, like Halloween and the Fog. I, <clears throat> I remember watching. Uh, you know, I, I like the supernatural. I found the supernatural stuff at times as a writer, I guess. Uh, sometimes to me came off as a cheat. When there was like the cute, when the killer turned it, when I was watching a slasher movie and the killer turned into some kind of supernatural entity or some possessed person, a lot of times I felt cheated. I was like, you couldn't think of a way to make one of the actual people here the killer and unmask them, so you threw in some supernatural thing. Uh, and that bothered me. When I was younger, I mean, like, it really, really bothered me. I was like, because I was grew up with jellos and slashers, and, and that was my thing. And when they started going to a more supernatural thing, like everybody loved Freddy. I love Freddy Krueger, like the Nightmare on Elm Street films, and for like so the technical masterpieces that a lot of these films were, especially Part Three. Part Three was like the most commercial, and uh, it just did a lot of stuff right, but had a lot of you know the Nightmare on Elm Street series had a lot of weak points, but Freddy was never one of them. He was just like extremely good actor and this was like one of the few ones that I could watch and say okay yeah I can get it past that it's not supernatural that it's supernatural because it's got a good basis like Fred, the Freddy character had a good basis and <clears throat> that's what I loved about some of these movies even like the stuff like Texas Chainsaw Massacre which just seemed kind of real and I grew up like not just loving Texas Chainsaw Massacre and movies like that but movies like Eaten Alive the follow up to that which a lot of people just didn't like or they didn't uh, take the time, or because it wasn't Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they weren't 
they weren't uh, into it. But uh, I actually bought Eden Alive, I think before I bought Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because I was just really into that movie. And I liked the way it was done. I liked the atmosphere and uh, the actors. I just liked it. Thought it was just an incredible movie. Fun House was another one. It was kind of, kind of a fun film. It was really obvious the way it was done, but the suspense was there, and uh, I really appreciated that type of movie and that type of work. So when I came out that to start collecting, uh, Anchor Bay was like obviously one of the ones I was getting. They had Gia Giallo films. They had like the Dare Gentles that I wanted. They had Evil Dead, which was a movie I remember seeing on a, oh man, I uh, was my cousin, on a tape with had no name on it. And that was, there was the Evil Dead, another one. And it hadn't even come out, I don't think, on VHS yet. But uh, we'd gotten it somehow. Uh, it was just an incredible, incredible experience. And it, it's, my love of the genre has grown over the years. Uh, through stuff that I found and discovered. And that's really cool about this genre. Is that there's so much, like, out of the way stuff. Or kind of weird stuff. Or niche stuff. Or just stuff that's you don't even realizes out there because horror had such a big boom that there was so much it made and so much it put out there that uh <clears throat> you can constantly be rediscovering something that was made 10 15 20 years ago that you never even knew about that becomes your next best favorite movie and uh that's why i love the stuff that i love that's why i play screen factory that's why i play arrow that's why i showed you guys my anchor bay collection and my trauma and my blue undergrounds and I didn't show you my blonde grounds and my trauma yet. I've got to do that down the road. I've got only got a handful of dark skies and like three or four scorpion releasings. Ones that I've got to get more of. i got to get some cult epics. Uh, <clears throat> just some incredible stuff. There is such a great time to be a, a collector. Uh, this just came out to be like a random unboxing of my uh, thing, but I hope you enjoy my rant as well. Uh, collecting right now is fantastic. And companies like Screen Factory. Arrow video snaps. I still am so pissed that I cannot get. <sighs> I guess Stepfather 2 is not going to be in my future. Stepfather films were big to me. Uh, Terry Quinn was fantastic. And the two first two Stepfather films were amazing. Yeah, I even liked the third one for its cheesiness, though I really missed uh, Terry Quinn. Uh, just great stuff. Well, maybe next time. But I'll still have you to upgrade my. Uh, Texas Chainsaw out of Blu-ray. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've got the, uh, the Steelbook. The Texas Guy Steel Film Steelbook. It's just so pretty. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to stop ranting now. And I'm going to go and finish watching my show. And then uh, I'm going to watch something really cheesy and hor horrific. But while I'm doing that, i got to get some tea. It's time for tea. This video is a little dark today. It's the uh, outside. It's been a little bit blurry. Have a good one.